Greetings. This video is just the first part of making a sword, mostly for decorative purposes and which will probably be used just as a prop. It cannot really cut anything, but it's not supposed to anyway. It should stay dull as it will most likely be used for taking photos, so I don't want the person who will use it to get cut. In this whole process there is no forging whatsoever, as I can't create conditions for it at the moment. So here is my way of making a sword and the grip in the next video. Two years ago, while I was still a student, I tried making a sword by welding up many thick iron wires together and then removing excess material and shaping with the angle grinder. I was warned many times how dangerous the angle grinder is and to make sure that I wear glasses and ear protection. Here I'm using headphones for a while, but since I'm trying to pay attention to whereabouts of my dogs, loop earplugs seemed more convenient. They mute the sound just enough to work without being bothered by the sound. I have spent some time slowly shaping the iron bar and now I'm not in a rush when using angle grinder. I'm not very strong so I'm just working slowly and precisely, not pressing too hard. Kickbacks can result in severe cuts, discs can shatter producing fragments which may become lodged in the operator's size or other parts of the body, potentially causing a fatality. I searched everything to find my safety glasses but they were nowhere to be found until later that day. That's why I didn't lean towards too much to avoid flying iron bits. I needed to weld the hilt and grip so I could continue shaping the sword. I wanted to seemingly be decayed as if the hilt was melted and like it has two wiggly snakes on both sides of the sword. I increased the power and went quite quickly over the sanded material leaving worms or waves and dots on the surface of the wires and the bar. When working with a big piece I always wear gloves and once again I couldn't find them still haven't. During welding the material can easily burn you if you aren't paying attention where you will touch it. It's better to go slowly and leave it to get cold on its own every now and then. I shaped the hilt with hammer and drew out the wiggle or the flame with a sharpie. I forgot to film it, so I just have a picture. It took quite some time to shape it. The wave in the blade is often considered to contribute a flame-like quality to the appearance of the sword. The most common flame bladed swords are rapiers. An advantage over swords with a straight blade is that a waved blade could better distribute the force of impact and thus was less likely to break. Bear in mind, these are only for cutting mince meat, so to say. Not a weapon, but a decoration. This one is just a subtle and short version. In the end, I got it a bit smoother with sandpaper, but not too much so I don't ruin the snakeskin texture it seemed to have. It is still shiny and very smooth to touch, but visually decorated with those scales sculpted with an angle grinder. Since it's not for real fight, I will most likely make a decorated terracotta handle, but I am still considering more options. I hope this inspires you to try making something similar on your own, perhaps even resulting in an even better and more skilled attempt.